Welcome to the Plain English Public Health Weekly Report. I'm Richard Greenland, and today is January 22nd, 2021. As always, we start with our COVID-19 statistics. Worldwide, we have nearly 99 million cases and over 2.1 million deaths. In the United States, we have over 25 million cases and nearly 425,000 deaths. The biggest news this past week was that President Biden uh, was sworn in as the 46th president of the United States of America. Um, we can all have different ideas about his politics, but from a public health perspective, uh, this is a good thing, at least uh, on at least based on the immediate consequences of pandemic relief. Um, President Biden has detailed a comprehensive uh, plan to get vaccines distributed quickly and efficiently. Um, he's ordered FEMA uh, to set up vaccination centers throughout the nation, and he's also uh, told the CDC to work with local pharmacies in order to get uh, vac- vaccines uh, to become more readily available. He's also vowed to strictly follow public health guidelines um, you know, based on science, and he's renewed the uh, U.S. support for the World Health Organization. Um, those are two big steps forward in public health uh, that used to be the norm, but then those things got taken away uh, because of President Trump. Um, he decided to stop giving support to the World Health Organization and he pretty much ignored all the science that had anything to do with the pandemic. Um, So much of the blame of our current pandemic situation is squarely on the shoulders of former President Trump um, and his terrible public health decisions. Um, Again, we're not trying to be political. We're just stating facts here specifically about public health. It was not good. (laughs) So we're looking, we're, we're hoping that this will be better. Um, In another split from the former president, uh, President Biden has called for Americans to wear masks, um, you know, in accordance with the CDC guidelines. Uh, It's debatable if he has the power to issue a nationwide mask mandate, uh, but in the meantime, while they figure that all out, um, he he has issued a mask mandate uh, for any federal properties. Um, Also, he's issuing a mask mandate uh, for any public transportation vehicles and hubs that affect multiple legal jurisdictions, such as airplanes and airports, uh, inner city buses and bus terminals, trains, etc. Anything that crosses borders, basically, whether city borders or state borders or anything like that. Um, Another important public health uh, measure that President Biden is trying to get passed is another stimulus bill. Um, The previous stimulus bill, as welcome as it was, uh, definitely wasn't enough. (laughs) Um, There are still a lot of people that need Uh, you know, more direct cash. Um, We've talked briefly about that uh, in the past as far as how effective that is, and I've also recently included some links, even though we haven't had time to talk about it. Um, But direct cash has actually been shown to be uh, some of the most effective ways to get people out of poverty, especially in situations like this, um, where it's a temporary type of thing. Um, But but this new stimulus bill, um, there are a number of parts to it that are directly related um, to uh, the pandemic. There are also a few things that were kind of added on uh, that still may be important. Um, it's more, uh, I don't know, I guess more of a political uh, grenade. <laughs> um, it, it could backfire possibly. But the, the main parts of this that most experts believe will pass are the ones directly related to the pandemic relief. Congress still has to go back and forth on it. Um, and there's a good chance that some parts of the bill will not make it through, but they have said that most likely uh, the bigger parts that are related directly to pandemic relief will probably make it through, and we need that. We really do. Um, Among other things, this bill would include more stimulus checks directly to people that qualify and more money for testing and vaccinating. Uh, Moving on to other COVID-19 news, uh, the Capitol riot from a couple of weeks ago is now being considered a super spreader event. Um, Most of the protesters and rioters uh, did not wear masks, um, despite being in very close proximity to one another. Um, And then they went back home, and they likely passed it on to people in their community. Um, So definitely a super spreader event. We actually know specifically of cases um, that were caused, you know, or were spread through the riot, um, including some uh, Congress, some members of Congress um, that ended up being small rooms huddled together while they were hiding from the rioters. Um, many of the lawmakers, especially on the Republican side, were not wearing masks. Um, and we do know that at least one Republican lawmaker 
um, was positive for COVID at that time. And we've had positive tests from some of the other lawmakers now who were in rooms with that person and within other rooms also. So definitely a super spreader event. It's, it's unfortunate the riot happened. In fact, unfortunate is a really weak word for it. <laughs> Um, but it was even worse, you know, as bad as that was, it's even worse now because we're spreading the virus even more due to that. Um, let's move on to some better news. Um, Eli Lilly, uh, one of the pharmaceutical companies, has released results uh, of a study done with its antibody drug uh, in nursing homes. And what it was able to show is that it not only helped to decrease the, the deaths, um, you know, for those that were already infected, um, but when, it, when the drug was given to those who were not yet infected, um, it was very effective at keeping people from getting uh, the virus, the COVID-19. Um, so this may help to ease some of our concerns about the vaccine being distributed too slowly. Um, speaking of vaccines, Pfizer has said um, that they now have enough stock in hand um, to give second doses to all, you know, to everyone that got first doses um, and, you know, even those that were not yet given to people, if they sent it out, they've got enough to cover a second dose for all those that they sent out, whether they've been given or not. Um, so with Pfizer and Moderna ramping up production, and with uh, you know, a couple other vaccines, um, the uh, AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines likely to be approved within the next month or two, um, we should have enough uh, vaccines to get everybody uh, vaccinated fairly quickly. Um, that all depends on how well uh, President Biden's administration does with rolling out these vaccines, um, but it does look promising based on the stuff that's been said and the things that have already started to be done. Um, so cross your fingers. Um, as we've mentioned in previous reports, um, there are concerns that some variants of the virus may make current vaccines uh, less effective. Uh, in fact, there have been a couple more variants that popped up around the world this past week too. Um, but there are also a number of vaccines uh, that are currently in phase one and phase two trials um, that should be available within the next three to five months, maybe six months, um, that are that attack the, the situation a little bit differently. Um, they don't rely on that spike protein. Um, and so even if there are uh, different variants that can get past the current vaccines, the Pfizer and Moderna ones, um, these other ones should be able to keep it um, from... Uh, you know, this should still vaccinate us properly so that we don't get the, uh, get the virus. Um, so a new study has found that while around 90% of Americans do wear face masks when they're shopping, only about half of Americans wear face masks in other public situations that the CDC has said we should be wearing face masks in. Um, we need to remember that anytime we are uh, you know, around people that are not of our household, we should be wearing a face mask. Um, it's not just the grocery store. It's also work, school, waiting in lines, uh, going to church, visiting friends, etc. Um, the virus doesn't care where you are. All it cares about is spreading as quickly and efficiently as possible. So please, let's wear those face masks. In non-COVID news, the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, uh, released the results of a study comparing a low-fat plant-based plant diet to a low-carb animal-based diet. Um, so in current you know, regular diets that we're seeing, it's kind of like a, a vegetarian versus a keto type of thing. Um, not exactly, but it, it, that's the closest we have to regular diets that we normally see um, you know, as we're going through our day. Um, and so both diets in the study focused on minimally processed foods um, and had the same amount of non-starchy vegetables. Um, so those on the low-fat diet ate much fewer calories and had a significant uh, loss of body fat. Uh, they didn't report being any hungrier uh, than the low-carb dieters, um, just the same. Uh, the low-carb dieters did have uh, more stable insulin and blood sugar levels um, than the low-fat dieters, um, and even though they had a high fat diet, um, they didn't gain any weight. Um, this, this study wasn't specifically for weight loss, um, but uh, the low fat dieters did lose body fat um, and the, uh, the high fat or low carb dieters didn't at least gain any weight. 
Um, the researchers concluded that either diet uh, option could be worthwhile depending on the individual's needs. Um, they did point out, however, that previous studies um, have shown that highly processed foods um, do contribute to weight gain um, and also a higher risk of obesity. Um, since both groups in the study were provided uh, with minimally processed food, uh, that may have been a major factor in, in seeing that you know, both of these uh, diets seem to work fine. Uh, many recent studies have shown that eating whole or minimally processed foods is healthier than eating highly processed ones. Speaking of highly processed foods, we actually do have a recall on specific lots of pepperoni hot pockets. Um, they may have pieces of glass or hard plastic in them, um, so please check the link below the video um, to see if uh, you know your pepperoni hot pockets happen to meet those uh, those lot requirements. You have to look at the number on the box. Um, if they do, please take them back to the store for a complete re refund. Um, definitely don't try and eat them. Um, so we've spoken about gut bacteria in past reports, um, and this week we have a new study to report on. Researchers found that certain groups of gut bacteria are more strongly associated with a person's risk of heart disease, diabetes, and obesity than their genetics. Um, typically, genetics is a really strong indicator there, um, as well as uh, you know other things like lifestyle choices. Um, but apparently, gut bacteria is actually a very strong indicator also. Um, they found that eating certain types of food encourage the growth of good gut bacteria, those that are beneficial um, and that lowered the chance of uh, you know, having obesity um, and obesity-related diseases. Um, Plant-based foods and oily fish um, were some of the best foods for growing good gut bacteria. So thank you for watching the Plain English Public Health Weekly Report for January 22nd, 2021. Um, as always, we have a lot of stuff that we could have gone over that we just don't have time for. We've got links below the video um, if you want to check that out, and also if you want more information on the things that we did talk about. I'm Richard Greenland, and you have a healthy weekend.